Today's presentation is How To Weight Shift Trikes, the 101. Our presenter is Paul Hamilton. Paul's a private pilot for weight shift trikes and airplanes. He's also a flight instructor for weight shift trikes and airplanes. He's a DPE designated pilot examiner for trikes and airplanes and a light sport repairman maintenance rating for trikes and airplanes. And he's the owner operator of sportaviationcenter.com. Paul, thank you so much for being with us and sharing triking with us. Um, I know it's a beautiful way to fly. It's just a, it's like a motorcycle in the sky, I always say. And uh, what a beautiful scenery you have there to fly over where you're based out of. I'm going to turn control the presentation over to you. Okay, so it looks like I'm I'm on here. Oh, let's see here. You're on. I can hear you just fine. All you got to do is show us your screen. Okay, let's see. Show my screen. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. Looks good, Paul. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for spending time with me here. And here we're going to look at the basics of weight shift control. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at what is a weight shift control trike, powered hang glider, why fly a weight shift control trike, how do they fly, choosing the right aircraft for you, and learning to fly a weight shift control trike. Those are five subjects we're going to be covering today. So to start out, we need to realize that the weight shift control trike is a flying wing, just like the B-2 bomber. Now, there's very few successful commercially available flying wings out there. The trike is one of them, and the B-2 bomber is another. Both of these are flying wings. The other thing that's significant is that it's a flexible wing. Some people actually call the weight shift flex wings. It's a flexible wing, just like the Wright brothers wing. Now the Wright brothers originally used to flex their wing to be able to turn. And the weight shift control actually flexes to turn. And we'll go over that. A lot of people also ask, well, how long have these things been around? Well, let's talk about the evolution here a little bit. First of all, Otto Lilienthal, back in the late 1800s, he was foot launching Palos gliders. Then NASA in the late 1950s, they decided to try using the Regalo wing for space recovery. That way they could fly them down to a specific area. They had complications or whatever, and they ended up going with parachutes, but they did quite a bit of uh, research here. They even had what they call the FLEEP, the flying Jeep. And what happens was that uh, another NASA, Barry Palmer, put a motor on the bottom of a uh, Regala wing and had the first, this is actually the first trike in the early 60s. Then what happened after that, hang gliding took off in the 70s. Now, here we have the original Regala wing type aircraft. Then what happened, that evolved, we put some Battens in the tip to make it more like a bird wing. Okay. Then this evolved to a double surface, foot launched, and finally to a high performance hang glider wing. Here I'm flying at like 14,000 feet over, over Lake Tahoe and had launched down at this little spot right down here. So these hang gliders become very efficient wings. Now, Meanwhile, several attempts were made to motorize the hang glider wing. Here we have the, the Regala wing with a little, little motor here. Here we had another uh, hang glider wing with a, with a motor here, a shaft going back to a propeller back here. Uh, this didn't work out because the thrust line was too high above the center of gravity. These wings only weighed about. 40, 50 pounds. Here we had a 180 pound person, so this thrust line needed to be a little bit lower. What finally happened was that for the actual powered hang glider, is that a motor here with some stretch down here, and you could foot launch this, take it off, and then once you get up there, you tuck your feet into the little cocoon here, and you had a powered hang glider. So finally, the undercarriage of a hang glider 
was put on the hang glider wing, and, th and this is where it earned the name trike, because you have a trike undercarriage underneath your hang glider wing. That's where it originally got the word trike. So today, now we have a wing and a carriage, two separate items. Sort of the essence of how this weight shift control works is two separate items, wing and the carriage. What we have here is this evolved into an ultralight trainer two place or the ultralight single place. Now, of course, to fly the two place, you have to have an FA pilot's license, uh, FA flight instructor certificate to train ultralight pilots in the two place, and you've got FA maintenance requirements. Of course, as most of you probably know by now, with the single place ultralight, no license is required, and you can do your self maintenance. So the strike and the powered hang glider can have variations in soaring, backcountry, and airport. And of course, here we have our soaring single place, our backcountry, airport to airport. So over time, this weight shift has evolved to a number of different uh, lifestyles here. So now let's talk about why fly a weight shift control trike. Well, if you notice here, back in October 2004, EAA asked me to write an article on why fly a weight shift. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over that now, again, in greater detail, modernize here. But what we have is a simple aircraft. It's portable. It's fun and easy to fly. They're less expensive to buy. And they've got great performance. So let's look at each one of these individually here. Now. Again, we've talked about a separate wing. Here we have the frame. And of course, you put a sail over this. And the carriage. Two separate items here. And here we can see our carriage with our propulsion system, our cockpit, and our landing gear, and our wing. Now, notice here we've got a lightweight and slow aircraft with no no fairing, very simple. And here we've got your heavier and fast. This is this is like your 100 horsepower fuel injected Rotax. And this is actually the aircraft I fly fly now. Here we've got our a nice little 503 50 horsepower. So here we can we've got quite a range here in light and slow, heavy and fast, 50 horsepower and your 100 horsepower fuel ejected. Now, one of the things you can do here is that you can detach the wing. Now, notice here we've got our wing detached and on top of the RV and the carriage put inside a really small trailer. This is only a six foot wide trailer. And this is my uh, original transportation here, detaching the wing. Now, if you want to go for a faster setup and takedown, you can leave the wing attached, fold the wing uh, in, and put the whole thing in. This, this is maybe a two hour setup or takedown by getting the wing off of here and on top of here. This can be as little as 20 minutes, folding the wing in and rolling it inside a trailer. So it's very transportable. I've had a lot of people say, hey, they've decided to uh, take up triking mainly because it's so transportable. Here we have another example of a uh, ultralight. Now, this is uh, Larry Mednick with Evolution Trikes. He's come up with this innovative idea of a way to fold an ultralight quick and easy, put on a little dolly here, roll it in. Here we have another example of where the wings have been folded. This mast usually goes straight up here and the wings fold out. Here the mast comes down. The control bar can put right uh, on the uh, keel here. And this could easily be 
rolled into a trailer in and out of garage. Uh, very easy to transport. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to, I'm going to tell you a little story here. Um, with the wing design, can be easily transported for amazing adventures. Now, back in 2002, when I had this little, I had a little 503 on a trike, we got together with all three of my buddies from Hawaii, and we planned this trip to fly from Reno Lake Carson down the Sierras, all the way down here up to Mount Whitney, the top of the continental United States, and all the way down to Death Valley, the bottom of the continental United States. And I've got a whole, I've got a, a video on this, and I'll show you where to get to that later, but we did a, I did a complete video documentary of this trip. And when we flew up to Mount Whitney, my wife Loretta was unable to go up with us because we needed all the performance we could get, and we, it was a little bit windy up there, so we didn't want to take our students up with. So she didn't get to go on that. So what happened was we took our new rig here with our RV trailer. Notice how the trike is inside here with the wings still attached. Motorcycle can go right in the back here. We took that. Uh, it was totally foggy. We, we're down at Lone Pine. And we planned a trip from Lone Pine Airport, this is in California, uh, up, climbing up to Mount Whitney at the 14,491 feet. The highest point, this is the highest point in the continental United States. So we had like a 10,000 foot climb from Lone Pine up to Mount Whitney here. Then from Mount Whitney, we're gonna have a 15,000 feet descent all the way across here out to Stovepipe Wells Airport at sea level. So again, top to bottom. And this ended up being a 126 mile trip climbing here all the way out here. Turned out that we have Mount Whitney right up here. It cleared enough for us to continue and do this. And so we rolled this thing out and we actually made it all the way up to Mount Whitney up here. We had to go over a big cloud bank here. And here we are descending from Mount Whitney, and here we are in Death Valley. So we finally were able to accomplish that, that trip, having a transportable aircraft allowed us to do that. So, Let's talk a little bit now about how it's fun and easy to fly. Now, when you're flying a weight shift control, you've got the control bar in your hands just like this. The wing is in your hands. There's no controls except for having this wing in your hands. Now, you notice we got our left hand here, right hand here. Notice this just like riding a motorcycle. If we want to make a, a turn, we just generally move the bar over. Here, with the motorcycle, we just twist a little bit. So flying the weight shift control is very similar to riding a motorcycle. The other thing is that fun and easy to fly. There's no mechanical controls. Okay, The wing is in your hand. Now, notice we got the wing right here, the control bar. Notice that it, that is attached right to the wing. So you've always got that wing in your hands. No mechanical controls. And also, the visibility is incredible. Notice how this particular trike here has no front strut. So you can see straight out. Uh, great visibility, plus you can look straight down. Uh, this is one of the things people love about flying the trikes is your uh, just like just like riding a motorcycle, you are out there in the wind, feeling free. Another advantage uh, is that trikes are less expensive. We get, we've got no pulleys, control rods, wires, or control surfaces. As you can see, we've just got our wing here and our undercarriage. Our wing, 
and our undercarriage. No control surface. Now we're going to talk a little bit here in a while about uh, how these actually fly, but with less stuff on there, it co they cost less and they're lighter weight. As we can see, no empennage or tail. We end up getting great performance with less drag components and lighter weight. Actually, this this one right here flies about the same speed as a as a Piper Cub, and with less drag, no tail, no tail, less components. Here, this is the same uh, a track I took on that ultralight adventure here, but this particular track with a 50 horsepower Rotax engine, I flew this up to 17,000 feet here to take this picture of Lake Tahoe. So here we have uh, 50 horsepower climbing to 17,000 feet, lighter weight and lower drag. And again, here we are uh, headed up to Mount Whitney. This engine, fuel injected engine climbed up. Here we're summiting Mount Whitney, 14, 000, almost 14,500 feet here. Better performance at higher altitudes and at lower altitudes. Now let's talk about how does a weight shift control work? We've talked a little earlier, we've got our wing and our carriage. Now our wing is unique because it's got a nose angle, it's got wing twist and flexibility. We're gonna talk about these. And our carriage handles our engine, cockpit and landing gear. First of all, we see how all these weight shift controls have a nose angle. Pretty good nose angle, okay? And we can see that that nose angle. You can't have one that, you cannot have a weight shift that doesn't have a nose angle, it won't be stable for a number of reasons. And here we got like a larger, slower wing, and we've got our smaller speed wing. The smaller the wing, the faster it's gonna be, and the more power you have to have to, to use it. Second, we've got wing twist some call it billow some call it washout i end up using it using wing twist because that's what the uh, airplane people like to use and so it's a little easier to communicate that way but this is also known as billow and washout but notice that at the nose at our wing root our nose is at at, at more of an angle of attack than our tip so as we go from our, our wing root out to the tip, the wing twists significantly from a higher angle of attack to a lower angle of attack here. Essentially what's, what, what this is, if you wanna think of it like an airplane, is that this is your regular wing right here, and this is your tail. So when we look at the a rear view of the wing, we can see how we got the higher angle of attack here. And as we go out, this trailing edge goes up, creating less of an angle of attack at the tips. So we have a much greater angle of attack here and less angle of attack here. And here we can see that high, higher angle of attack here. As we go out on the wing, we can see how that is a lower angle of attack our relative wind is hitting this at it, creating less angle of attack here, more angle of attack here. Twist, billow, washout. This is the secret here to the flying wing. And as you can see here now, there's of course different designs. Here you can see two similar powered hang gliders. We can see our, from this angle here, we can see our angle of attack here. And as we go in, we can see a greater angle of attack here. Same thing here, we can see our uh, less angle of attack here and greater angle of attack here. Now this, as you can see, the design of this wing is a little bit different than this wing. This has a little bit greater angle of attack here than it is here. This has a little bit less, less twist in it. Twist, billow, or washout, whatever you want to call it. Now we're going to look at how the wing warps. 
flexibility in twist creates roll. So what happens is when we shift our weight to the right, here's an example. It loads this side up and this wing twists more, creating less angle of attack, which drops the wing. This, so there's more billow and twist. It tightens this side of the wing up, creating a, a greater angle of attack, which lifts this wing. What actually happens here is that this keel twists. When you move your weight over to the right, this keel actually moves over to the right because this is not attached, creating this twist. And this is really the how these things wing warp. And where we can avoid control surfaces. So that's for roll. Now, when we look at our our carriage, where we've got our, our engine, landing gear, and fuselage, notice that when we put the wing on top of our carriage below, the wing rotates around this point. We call this the hang point. So when we push the control bar forward, the nose goes up. When we pull the control bar in, the nose goes down. And when the nose goes down, we gain more speed because we're actually moving our weight forward on the wing. When we push out, we get a higher angle of attack and we're pushing our center of gravity back on the wing. So this is how we actually control our pitch is through rotating that wing nose up and nose down. Now we're getting kind of in kind of in the the details here, but we're going to talk about this just a little bit here to kind of wrap up the how how does the weight shift work. So normally when we're at trim, we've got our nose which has a certain amount of lift here, and our tail that has a certain amount of lift here. Our tips, a certain amount of lift here. These both both balance both these all this combines into our a center lift, and that's basically right under our center of gravity. Now, when we push the nose forward, and we get a higher angle of attack here, we get this this area here stall, so we lose our lift here. We're getting a higher angle of attack here, and we get more lift back here, which tends to rotate us forward. And want to increase speed. So as we slow it up, it wants to naturally increase speed. Now when we pull the bar in, okay, now we have almost zero angle of attack on the tips. More lift here. Since we get more lift here, it's going to, going to want to raise the nose. Okay. So as we pull the bar in, we go faster, the, the nose wants to raise and go back to our our trim here. So here's a lot of the magic of how this flying wing works. So let's talk a little bit here about what lifestyle do you want? Now we've got I've broken this down into basically four lifestyles. We got the soaring, backcountry, cross country, and water flying. We're going to look at each one of those. Soaring trikes have lightweight, larger wings that allow you to climb up, shut off the engine, and soar on the updrafts. And we notice here we've got a bigger wing, uh, a lightweight fuselage, and here we've got our our actual super super duper glider, very high efficient. This is a, a highly developed hang glider wing. And they put a, a trike undercarriage on here. And this thing is a super soar. So here you can climb up, shut off the engine, and ride the updrafts. That's one lifestyle. The other lifestyle, it, this now this appears to be the most sought after lifestyle that trike piles are after. And that's backcountry. Now notice here, uh, this is a backcountry trike I had at one time. We'd fly this out to the dry lake bed, park it, 
have tea. Great way to live. Great lifestyle. Go where you want to go. You can land on beaches. This is your back country. Especially for back country. Here we have a basically a back country ultralight. What you really need is big tires. Big tires are the key, along with lighter weight and sometimes a bigger wing so you can get off the ground easier. And notice how we got our big tires here. Big tires for our backcountry trike. The other type of trike is your high speed cross country trike. And here we've got uh, Michaela, she's my other flight instructor. We've got showing uh, all enclosed, uh, a shade here so you're not in the wind, even though you might be going 90 miles an hour. Here we can go great distance up to 90 miles an hour and you know typically fly at airports. Now it turns out that this particular trike here has pretty big tires. So you can actually uh, land this out on the dried lake bed, but I try not to beat it, beat it up too bad because it's my main trike I do most of my training in. And let's not forget our water fly. Notice this trike right here has pontoons on it only. So this can land on water and take off on water. And this is the two pontoons. Here we have our flying boat, of course with no wheels. And here we have our, this is actually the trike I got my water rating on. Here we have our, this is the amphibious. We've got our floats. And we also have wheels that we can put down. There's another wheel right in front here that goes down. For my training in this, we take off an airport with the wheels down, put the wheels up, go land on the water, do touch and goes there. And then while we're taxiing on the water, put the wheels down and then drive up onto the beach. So here's your amphibious. So there's your water flying trike. This is probably one of the most important things for you to be thinking about here. What lifestyle do you want? Soaring, backcountry, cross country, or water flying? Let's learn about how to fly a weight shift control trike. So we're going to go over our training materials. We're going to go over the process of learning, how long and how much, the next steps. Now, of course, how long and how much, that's what everyone wants, wants to know. I just got to. I've had two calls today. Hey, how long is it going to take me to do this and how much is it going to cost? We're going to talk about that. For training materials, basically we've got books and online courses. And this is the training syllabus for weight shift control trike. This is the book I wrote for the FAA on weight shift control aircraft flying handbook. And this is the I will call this the, the, the flight training and the ground training. I also write, wrote this book here for for trikes, as well as the test prep. Now, ultralights, you don't have to worry about the FA test prep. So you would you would be looking at these three books here if you like paper books. Now, I've also got all these books, everything in my Learn to Fly a Trike Weight Shift Control online pilot training course. So this is a complete course. It goes through everything all the way from starting uh, all the way through your check ride. And we'll talk about how this applies to an ultralight. Of course, the process, the flight training is done in a two-place light sport aircraft. So if you notice here, typically what I do is I first fly in the back, then after a a flight or two and you start to feel comfortable, I put you in the front. If you notice from back here, I can control the wing. I've got a throttle control here. I've actually got a kill switch on the other side so I can, and I've got ground steering right here. So when you're learning to fly an ultralight, I'm in the back here and have, have pretty much all the controls, except for the brake. We'll go over that a little bit later. And of course, we have a whole lot of fun learning to fly. The basics here, as we talked about before, bar position. Now, the bar position right here, you can see the bars is in the trim position. Okay, 
You pull it in, you're going to go fast. You push it out, you're going to go slow. So we learn in the two place about bar position. Bar position is your speed. You pretty much can let go of the bar and it will fly at the most efficient uh, speed. And so you learn that bar position in the two place, then you get in your ultralight and you just fly it by bar position. Here we're at, you can see how we're having fun here, flying over the mountains. Lorette in the back here, she's flying from the back. The other thing is, for the two place to single place basics, we've got our foot steering and throttle use. Now these are all things you learn in the two place. Now what happens is that you've got your foot steering where you move it just like a motorcycle with your feet, and you've got your throttle right here. So you've got a lot going on with using your throttle, pushing on the throttle, letting up on the throttle. Some of them have a second throttle here. But here's an example of the other side. This is where you put your foot on the peg here, and this is actually your brake. So you get the same thing on the other side over here. You got your brake on this side, throttle on the other side, and here you're going to be pushing on your pegs here to turn the wheel. Going from a two place to single place basics, you get your foot steering and your throttle use. And like we talked about earlier, your bar position. All those trans translate right from your two place to your ultralight. The other thing is that the ultralight is about half the cost of the two place light sport aircraft pilot's license. In the single place ultralight, when we go through our training in the two place, we learn takeoff, maneuver, stalls, spirals, landings. We teach you airport operations, everything so you're ready to solo. That's about halfway through your course. Now, of course, if you want to go on to your two place light sport aircraft, all your training you did counts towards your pilot's license. But here, we've got to get your. FAA knowledge test, we do the required cross country, and then we do the FAA check ride. These are the additional things uh, that you need to do. Now, of course, for the two place, here all your maneuvers have to be done within a certain precision. And of course, you're tested by an FAA designated pilot examiner, such as myself. How long and how much? What I tell people, and this varies, between 10 hours of flight time, and we're going to call that $2,000, at two hours per day is five days. So you can say, someone picks it up real quick, 10 hours of flight time, 2,000, uh, five days. Now, it can take you up to, say, 30 hours or more um, hours of flight time, $6,000. At two hours per day, figure 15 days. Now, now you're asking, why so much of a range? 10 hours, 30 hours. Well, there's a there's a good reason for that, and let's talk about that. So much your everyone learns at a different rate, okay? And this depends on your frequency of flying, your ability to pick up the motor skills. Say machine operators are going to pick this up faster than if you've been sitting at a desk pushing a pencil. Uh, preparation and study habits and your age. Unfortunately, the older you are, the longer it's going to take. So these are the factors they're going to play into how long it takes. When we're talking about preparation and study habits, if you go in and you read the books, and or uh, especially take the course. All, all these books are in this course right here, plus a whole bunch of videos on how to learn how to fly. So if you would go through and this course right here, Learn to Fly Away Online Pilot Training Course, you're going to be way ahead because now you're going to know we go through all the flight lessons, all the maneuvers, takeoffs, landing, spirals, everything, showing you how to do that. From a pilot's point of view, if you go through all that, you're going to get through all this a lot faster. What we've talked about here is what is a weight shift control trike powered hang glider? Why fly a weight shift control trike? How do they fly? 
choosing the right aircraft for you, choosing your lifestyle, and learning to fly away ship control trike. Next steps. Now, if you're sitting there right now, what you need to do is right now, go get a pen and a pencil and get ready to copy down the resource websites. Okay. You can also be pondering your dream of flying, what lifestyle you want. You can start study prepare before you take lessons. And please take lessons before you run out and buy an aircraft. Because when you take lessons, you are going to learn more about buying an aircraft. Believe me, most of the people who run out and buy an aircraft and then decide to take lessons are surprised at what they bought and they say, geez, if I would have known, I would have done something different. Get that pen and pencil. So, Because so, what we've got here is we've got our, our main website, sportaviationcenter.com. That's the main thing you want to find. Now, at that website, at the very, very top, we've got pilot stores. This is where you're going to get your pilot stores. You can get your books. And you've got your online training, e-learning, sportaviation.center. That's your button right up here. Now, when you work in the stores and the online training, uh, Loretta is kind of your, this is my wife, Loretta. She's going to help you get everything going, make everything work if you can't get it to work. Um, and on our online training courses right here, you can go to our main website. Additionally, videos i have got so many videos on my youtube station youtube slash paul d hamilton on here and i'll show you some of the categories we've got here now if we notice here i've got aviation trike light sport aircraft learn to fly these are all learn to fly videos we've got aviation tr flying adventures now here's a complete video on that trip we made up to Mount Whitney, top to bottom. Three different parts, flying Lake Powell, zipping along the river here, all about waste shift control reviews, options, what to buy. I've got a video here that talks in detail about my trailer or how to store a trike in here and all the details of how that works. Also, I've got my video archive. Now these are actually, these videos are 20, 20 years old here. And here's that ultralight odyssey we did way back 20 years ago. I've got another one, monumental triking. So these are the, uh, I'm calling these the video archives. So all this, you can watch all kinds of videos here at YouTube station. Again, resources, books, online training videos. You've got myself. You've got Loretta who does, works all of our stores and e-learning. And we've got Michaela, this is our other full-time flight instructor. So we've got two full-time flight instructors here with trikes and Loretta to help you get going on with all your other stuff. Okay, so I'm ready for questions. All right, Paul, thanks a lot. Um, we've got a quest, couple questions that have already come in here. Sure. 